Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Redemption Online. If you enjoy this video, please put on a cowboy hat and jump on random people's back while repeatedly hitting the back of their head and shouting, subscribe to Modest Pelican or I'll ride you forever, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. So I load into the game, looking like a cross between the train conductor and the guy at the train station who is selling dexamphetamines to stay at home mums. Real talk though, and look I know I'm no medical specialist, but my guy here looks really unhealthy, like he can barely keep his majestic little eyes open. Thank God he has that panty dropping moustache, otherwise he'd be in real trouble. We are currently waiting for Stealth Omato to ride over and meet us, so we've got a bit of time to kill, and what better way to kill time in Red Ved Tedemption than a bar fight. I burst into the bar and do what all good alpha males do, and look for someone smaller than me to beat up. If you can't find someone smaller than you, the elderly or even children also make great punching bags. Anyway, the epic bar fight I envisaged hasn't really kicked off as I hoped, so I pull out this guy's chair from under him. To my absolute surprise, he manages to hold himself up, which is quite astonishing. Like imagine this guy's calf muscles, what a unit. I don't really want to fight Carfi McGee, so I decide to just find Marto by myself. And what better way to get there than my trusty wagon? Well, obviously it's not my wagon, but I did take it and I did say no takesies backsies, so I guess it actually is mine now. I find Marto in some field more lost than a blind deaf orphan. So now that we're together, we can check out the rest of this new update. Plus there's also this cute thing they added, which I'll show you and it's genuinely bloody amazing. Yes, I just tried to build up hype for a video you have already clicked on and started watching. Welcome to YouTube 2019. So first up, we're going to try out the collector role. We've got to go and talk to a gypsy named Madame Nazar. Her boyfriend is also here, or maybe it's her dad. Actually, it's probably both, she is a gypsy. Nazar gives me the satchel and is like, LOL, go and have fun collecting things before that moustache causes a puddle at my feet. I guess Marto and I are now collectors and the first thing we have to collect is some fresh flowers. A gathering fresh flowers with the boys boys boys. It doesn't get more heterosexual than that. Apparently the first flower we need to harvest is in this spooky swamp. We come across another traveller by the name of Bad Mother Lover 99. What a sick gamer tag. Does that mean he's like bad at loving mothers? He also used U's instead of O's, so he's clearly the kind of mother lover you would not want to mess with. Surprisingly, he doesn't try to kill us, but instead helps us pick flowers. Three grown men picking flowers at night, and one's called Bad Mother Lover 99. You, the viewer, need to quickly realize what you're watching right now. Like you probably have things to do, but are instead procrastinating by watching three malakas trot around in the mud picking daffodils. We literally search all night for the sacred flower, and finally Mato thinks he's found it, but there's a small problem. A crocodile has chosen to nap on it. My horse named Big D then decides to just ditch me and leave me alone with the deadly beast. I should have named my horse Dad. Fortunately, we have powerful weapons and the crocodile is no match for our shotguns. Man, animals are so dumb, the croc should have brought a shotgun of his own or at least a Kevlar vest, what a big dumb idiot. Mato skins it and I pick the flower to secure our first rare flower for the collection. We be, but simple, horticulturalists. We ride out, ready to tackle whatever problem gets in our way. No rose will be too thorny. No bees will sting us. No bloody vine weevils will eat our petals. Jesus, it's really hard to make this sound epic. On our way to the next location, we discover a fun new game I like to call Trampling Slaves. The objective is relatively simple, you just trample slaves on your horse. The more you trample, the more you win at the game. The owners of the property don't seem to understand that we are just having a laugh. I actually hate people who can't take a joke. They were slaves, not kittens. Nobody that mattered got hurt. Anyway, as we flee, we come across a group of bandits who are about to execute a policeman, the poor sod. We fight reasonably hard to save him. I'll be honest, my heart wasn't in it, but you know, we showed up, we fired bullets. Looks like the policeman didn't make it though. Unlucky big dog, you win some, you lose some. That's just how the cookie crumbles. I decide to have a quick break 
by the campfire, God knows I've earned it, and Marto proceeds to take the policeman's hat, which is quite disrespectful, but you can't deny the lad looks fresh. I'm having deja vu. I don't think this is the first time Marto has defiled a corpse, and hot damn, I hope it's not the last. So the next flower we need to find is somewhere on these rolling luscious green hills. At this point, we're just picking anything we can find, and I don't like to brag, but we must be the best flower pickers in bread bled redemption. Marto says that two dodgy malakas are teasing us about our newfound hobby. Well, gentlemen, yes, making daisy chains might make my dick hard, but I'm no pansy. So I give him a little push. Things then really kick off, and at least this is the bar fight, or rather, meadow fight I always wanted, but then Marto pulls a gun out and shoots a guy. Of course, half the village sees this homicide, so here we are talking the witnesses out of getting the sheriff, and by talking the witnesses out, I mean gunning them down as they flee for their lives. Boy oh boy, being a horticulturalist is no joke. For some reason, Marto has kept one of the witnesses alive because he is a confirmed toxic griefer. He says he wants to do a social experiment and see how long it will take for this humble farmer to get out of the lake with his hands and feet tied together. After a short while, it becomes apparent that the farmer did not have the required skill set to escape. Anyway, let's check out the other role of being a trader. So the game fast travels us to the city of Saint Denis, and do you remember the police officer we failed to save from being executed? Well, this is his twin brother, so I'm like, hey, by the way, big dog, your brother was brutally murdered, but silver lining, Marto looked really good in your brother's hat. I head over to the general store to meet Cripps, who looks like the kind of guy who would slip a roofie into his own wife's drink. Cripps' plan is to set up a butcher table at our gang's camp. We will then be able to give him things like animal pelts and carcasses that he can then convert into sellable goods. Wait, last video I mentioned the idea of setting up a human organ farm. Hopefully we can also do that, fingers crossed. We set up the butcher table and hey presto, we're ready to begin the hunt for animals and slash or humans. Apart from the butcher's table though, the camp is looking pretty pathetic. I mean, my bedroom doesn't even have a roof. I just sleep out in the open like I was a... Well, I guess a blind deaf orphan. Yes, I realize I've already made fun of blind deaf orphans this video, but what are they going to do about it? Tell their parents on me? So I need to upgrade things, and while I'm browsing, I see something amazing. You can get a pet dog. Oh my god, this is next level. Spread Fred Fredemption just went from a 10 out of 10 to a 50 out of 10 because look at this little cutie. I decide to purchase a classic Labrador and it costs $400, which is quite expensive, but you can't put a price on pure joy. It's always hard to name pets, but this time it comes right to me. Everybody meet Marto's mother. Who's a good boy, Marto's mother? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I quickly purchase a tent so Marto's mother has shelter as it's important to be a responsible pet owner. I kid you not, Marto then starts spitting on his mother, which is just disgusting. She carried you around in her womb for nine months and then raised you and this is the scumbag you've grown up to become? Marto, apologize to your mother. This is getting weird, so yeah. I give all the random animal parts I happen to have on me to Cripsy Boy, but now it's time to hunt. I find what I can only assume is the Energizer Bunny and proceed to slay it with my bow. I then skin it and put it on my horse. Later, Cripps will turn this bunny into a pair of Gucci slides that we can then sell to insecure teenagers. My favorite hunting method, however, is lassoing animals and then giving them the old stabby McStab stab. Cripps will turn this deer into a pair of AirPods that we can sell to everyone except blind deaf orphans. With plenty of skinned animal carcasses, I ride back to camp, but then my bloody horse doesn't clear the fence. Mate, that fence was one foot tall. How are you so bad at being a horse? The amount of times you have ditched me or failed to jump something, my god. If I hadn't just spent $400 on Marto's mother, I'd replace you immediately. Anyway, I take the animals back to Cripps and he tells me he can't accept skinned or plucked carcasses. Wow, Cripps, you couldn't have mentioned that before I set out on my big hunting expedition. It seems like pretty important information there, Chief, but anyway, I go out and hunt again and bring him some unskinned animals. But you see, I'm also a big believer in making your dreams become your reality. So I decide to also bring him back a live human. 
I'm sure a human heart would sell for at least a few thousand dollars, right? Also, to all you anti-vaxxer parents out there, this is why you should vaccinate your kids, because otherwise, someone will sell their organs. Before I can deliver him to Crips, Marto gets attacked by some bounty hunters, and I guess as the leader of our gang, I should help save him. I also looked into the trading update a bit, and apparently later on you can unlock things like hunting wagons which store loads of animal carcasses. It's good to see legs spread redemption getting some cool updates like this. Unfortunately, Crips won't accept my human offering, which is sort of racist towards Aztec culture if I'm being completely honest, so now I'll have to figure out what to do with this guy. I can't exactly have him blabbing all over Le Mans that I tried to convince my butcher to harvest him, so I do the only humane thing I can think of. I throw him into the campfire so he can die peacefully. Well, we almost have a full wagon's worth of supplies to deliver, and we're all about cutting corners, so it's time to just send it. I drive the wagon while Marto rides alongside on horseback. It's all pretty chill, except when this small cliff comes out of nowhere. Seriously, someone should put a caution cliff sign there. It's very irresponsible and I'm not impressed. Not a problem though, we deliver the cargo and earned $45 for our efforts, which is really quite good. With work done, it's now time for play, and what better way to settle who's the better flower picker than a fight to the death on that little island. I know darn well I could easily just swim across, but how much more cinematic will it look if I take this gentleman's rowboat? This must be the most wholesome Red Dead Redemption video on my channel. We've picked flowers, now we are rowing a boat. Of course, Marto, the toxic kid, is trying to put holes in it though. Way to ruin my cutscene moment. So the rules are that we aren't allowed to shoot each other, just fists. Fights like this, however, are won and lost on mind games, so I do the mature thing and shoot Marto's horse to really rattle him. He doesn't take this well, and I mean who would, so he lassoes me and ties me up like I was an expensive escort. He then heads over to the lake to drown me, which is apparently his new favourite thing, but I break free and slit his throat for the easy win. Wow, so we clearly broke the no weapons rule, but time for round two. Marto again fights valiantly, but a local Ent comes in with the big assist and I narrowly come out on top. Round three, and he resorts to choking me. It turns from playful choking to serious choking pretty quickly, and he takes out round three. Just like how all good sessions end, we proceed to kill each other countless more times, but it's all in the name of good clean fun. And we are good sports about it. Though seriously, you're trash Marto KYS, you toxic kid, get good, you're a virgin, and I banged your mother. Wait, no, I, I didn't bang your, your mother. Anyway, I'm streaming the new COD Modern Warfare right now and for the next few hours after this video has been released, so feel free to come and say hi over on Twitch. Otherwise, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.